Bethesda wants to make a remake of The Elder Scrolls for Oblivion. Or at least there have been rumors all around about it. So let's discuss it, shall we? So, as one of the biggest fans of Oblivion, I have things to say. Oblivion is one of my favorite games of all times. I've played it definitely more than 10 times. So in this video I am going to answer the question that needs to be answered. What's the question you may ask? The main one, do we even need the Elder Scrolls Oblivion remake? There is a short answer to that question. No, we don't need Oblivion remake. Wait, you said it is one of your favorite games. Don't you want a remake? Yes, it is what I want, but it is not what we need. Now let me explain. First of all, we didn't get test 6 yet. It is crazy to make this for Oblivion before we get test 6. Well, that was obvious. A pretty obvious alternative would be if Bethesda would outsource it to some other studio, as they did with Tesla, or they can make a remake after test 6 release. But yet again, it is not what we need. Even if a different studio could make a good test remake, which is not guaranteed, Still, I think what we need in case if Bethesda would want to make a remake is Test 3 Morrowind Remake. Let's look at these two games closer. I want to start with the visuals, because this is the first thing that catches the eye. Yes, as you can see, the games are not the most beautiful by modern standards. But it seems to me that the issue of Oblivion graphics are often hyperbolized. There is a kind of consensus. People often say that Oblivion visuals are bad. It didn't age well. On the other hand, there is a consensus that says pixel art is not bad, it's just the visual styles of the game. It doesn't matter that the pixel art is not the most pretty, and Oblivion graphics are bad because... Yes, I understand. If you compare Oblivion with, for example, Red Dead Redemption 2, with its photorealism, it is obvious that Oblivion had bad graphics. But let's not raise the standards so high. Personally, I think that Oblivion graphics are quite stylistic. It looks like a painting. It's not the most realistic painting, but it's fantasy. And fantasy doesn't always have to be realistic, especially from a visual point of view. Though I doubt anyone can defend Morrowind visuals, it is too old. Of course, you can also say that Morrowind visuals looks like a painting, like those weird medieval paintings. Though I doubt it is a compliment. More like an insult. Anyway, there is not enough details to the extent where you can get lost in a cave, just because every passage in the cave looks the same as the others. Hell, the game is so old that it doesn't even have voice acting. Next, I want to mention that Oblivion is… don't laugh, it is a modern game. Yes, it is a 2006 game, and I said that it is modern. I mean that it is modern in terms of game design. If you compare Morrowind with Oblivion, the difference is obvious. Morrowind has old school game design. I will talk about it in a minute. For now, I will say that I can't recommend Morrowind to a modern player, because of how outdated the gameplay and navigation is in the game. No matter how much Morrowind is praised by old frogs, it is hard to play now. Period. Now let's get back to the point. In Morrowind there is a system that came from board games where there are chances of hitting the enemy. There is literally a crab standing in front of you. Literally a crab that doesn't move anywhere. And you strike it 20 times and miss every time. Like, is the character so stupid that it can't hit a target that doesn't move at close range? If we were talking about, for example, a human enemy, we could imagine that the enemy dodged your blow. But no, it's a freaking crab. Is this a ninja crab or something? It is even more absurd to use a bow in Morrowind. You need to aim the bow at the target, make a shot, the arrow must hit the enemy, and only then the game decides whether the arrow really hit your enemy or was it your imagination. Anybody there? Must be my imagination. So physically hitting the enemy is not enough. This is no longer the case in Oblivion. If you hit the enemy, you hit it. Period. Modern games have evolved. Previously, games could not visually and mechanically reflect the fact that your opponent dodged their hit, so it had to be reflected using a system of hit chances. 
That's why I personally draw a clear line on this parameter, where the game is modern and where it is not. Yes, the animation may be less elaborate, but the game design of Oblivion is the same as in modern games. And some may say, and actually, Baldur's Gate 3 has chance based game design, and it is the game of the year. This guy does not know what he is talking about. Well, first of all, Baldur's Gate 3 is not an action RPG, it is a turn based RPG. There is a reason why some mechanics work in some games, but don't work in others. It is a long discussion. I understand why there must be a chance based system in Baldur's Gate Combat. It have to be the way it is, but even though this system is a necessity in Baldur's Gate, it is the system that brings the most frustration to the players. Now let's get back to the point. Since we are talking about modernity, we can also mention markers on the maps. They are present in Oblivion and not present in Morrowind. Markers are good, because this means that the game respects your time. By the way, there is a quest in Oblivion without markers on the map. This is a quest to the DLC Knights of the Nine where you have to find all the sanctuaries of the Nine Gods. You are given a physical map, and you have to find all the sanctuaries on it. And although there is a group of people who claims that markers on the map are evil, I have never heard anyone say that the quest to find sanctuaries in Oblivion is good. It's funny, I once saw a video on YouTube, where in one video the author first criticized the markers on the map, and a couple minutes later, complained that it was difficult to get to the destination in the mountains, because you have to follow the roads and not just go straight to the marked location. To summarize, markers on maps are also a marker of a modern game. Yes, Oblivion also have some bad sides as well, and I realize it and I don't idealize the game. And the biggest problem of Oblivion is auto-leveling. The issue of auto-leveling is actually very deep and we may discuss the problem of auto-leveling in a separate video. For now, I will say that Skyrim has auto-leveling as well. But I don't hear people complain about it, so the problem is actually not in auto-leveling itself, but in the way this auto-leveling is configured. The real problem is that the game becomes harder as the player levels up. Of course, the game does not become unplayable. In fact, there are a lot of builds in Oblivion where you literally become invincible. But in general, the game is quite varied and gives you a lot of opportunities to progress. This includes crafting potions and poisons, creating your own spells and enchanting items of clothing and armor. At the end, let's not forget that there are a lot of things that are not affected by the fact that the game is 20 years old. Like the story, main quest and what is more important in my opinion, side quests and guild quests. The quests of Oblivion they are simply better than the Skyrim ones. I'm stronger, I'm smarter, I'm better! They are simply longer. You are constantly rising in ranks. That's why becoming a guild leader seems more deserved. Let's look at the companions and the fighter guilds. Before the death of Kodlak, you literally spoke with him two times for two minutes. That's why when he dies, you feel nothing. You don't care, you don't know him. He didn't become your father figure, like for example, Vesemir from The Witcher. And that's why when Kodlak appoints you as the head of the guild, it doesn't seem as something that could actually happen. Ayla commenting on this was surprised by Kodlak's decision. Obviously, at this point, Vilkas was supposed to be the head of the guild. Now, let's compare it to the Fighter's Guild from Oblivion. And I will be brief so as not to spoil you. You rise through the ranks of the guild, Face the problem of the guild, conduct her own investigation and literally save the guild from the destruction. The fact that she became the head of the guild after what you did is obvious. I also like how you have to steal for the Oblivion Thieves Guild. I like the Skyrim Thieves Guild, where you are just a bandit or a thug. Oblivion guilds make you actually roleplay, and I like how Thieves Guild and Dark Brotherhood are actually secret guilds that are hard to get in. Again, unlike in Skyrim, where you are literally forced to join them. All Oblivion guilds give you reasons to visit all the cities of the Cyrodiil. Just remember, if there is any mission in Skyrim that sends you to Falkreath. Maybe there is, but I don't remember. In Oblivion, you are sent to all the cities on the guild's assignments, which is cool because all the cities of Cyrodiil 
are unique from the architectural point of view. Again, unlike in Skyrim, and all of them are filled with unique and interesting quests. In Skyrim, the developers have cheated and put their requests in cities to fill cities with the quests. Thus, the map of Skyrim is less interesting to explore. I can talk about Oblivion quests for a long time. But, now that we have already concluded that Oblivion is a modern game with cool quests and story, we can get to the point again. And the point is that we don't need Oblivion Remake right now. I urge you to try and play the original game, because it is good the way it is. You won't get a lot of frustration, as if you would play Morrowind for the first time. Of course, the game could use some refreshing, but it is a perfectly okay game. It's not that the game has no bad sides and everyone who criticizes it is wrong. The game is often criticized quite fairly. I'm talking about the fact that the focus on internet is only on the negative side, but the positive is not fleshed out at all. Although in my opinion the positive aspects of Oblivion outshine the negative ones by a long shot. To summarize it all, Oblivion is a better version of Skyrim. I am better! Of course, with its own problems. But if you never played Oblivion and you like Skyrim, then I say you have missed a lot. This is a game of a hundred plus hours, with a cool story, original missions and not bad combat. At the same time Morrowind suffers because how old the game is. It is in a far worse position than Oblivion. Morrowind can really use the refreshing of the remake. The game is quite unique, meaning that it have unique visual style of environment. The game has good quests but is a completely joke on the level of performance meaning gameplay, mechanics, absence of voice acting, bad navigation and how bad visually the game looks like on the physical level. Stylistically, as I said, Morrowind is quite unique. Morrowind is a game that can be saved, and if we're talking about Morrowind Remake, we can get the whole Morrowind now, not just the central island, which means that there is a room to add a lot of original content. If you made up to this point, please leave a like and subscribe. There is a lot of content on the way in. And check the other videos that I've made. Now, eat your vegetables and don't be Nazi. See you later.